So hi, I'm Ben from NVIDIA and we're here at Eurogamer 2011. We have a very special interview for you now. I'm here with Chris Reinhardt, who's a project leader at Human Head Studios. Um, you may know them for obviously making Prey. We're here to talk about Prey 2. Um, what's, what's new about, about, the, about the sequel? Well, with Prey 2, what we wanted to do is we want to take players to a new place and experience new gameplay. Now, when I say that, because I say that because that was a core part of Prey 1, mm. that we took players to a, uh, a location and gave them gameplay they never really hadn't they hadn't really seen in a first-person shooter before. Mm. So we're doing the same thing with the sequel. Now that doesn't mean we're just throwing everything away from the first one. There are characters, there are situations, there are storylines that fans of the first one will definitely recognize in the sequel. But in the sequel, you play a new protagonist, a marshal by the name of Killian Samuels, who at the beginning of the game finds himself. He's actually abducted during the very same abduction sequence that grabbed Tommy from the first game. But Killian finds himself away from the aliens in a very different way. He uh, ends up on this distant planet called Exodus, and he's been there for years. He basically takes his skills as a U.S. Marshal and becomes a bounty hunter in this world. And kind of the real high-level tagline for the game is you play a badass bounty hunter in a sci-fi world. And what are some new features that you can expect to, to, as you're controlling the character? What are some like some key new features that will really make people who played perhaps Prey 1 but have come, have come to this as well are now thinking, wow, I can now do this and I wasn't able to do before? I'd say the biggest thing by far is the gadgets in the game. As a bounty hunter, you've got a ton of really, really cool gadgets, and they allow you to play differently than the way that I would play. Like, if you want to go in and you want to blow guys up with rockets, you could do that. If I want to be more of a mean badass, and I want to go in and I want to burn everyone with a flamethrower, I could do that as well. So there's a lot of different gadgets, not only just offensive gadgets, but defensive gadgets and stealth gadgets and so forth, that allow you to just go in and, and try to play different scenarios in different ways. Okay, and speaking of gadgets, obviously, it's a, it's a brand new game, brand new engine. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's enabled you to do, take advantage of some of the tech on offer. Um, what are some of the new things that you've been able to do? Well, in terms of the engine, we started with id Tech 4. Great base. Uh, we've got, we're intimately familiar with the code. It's the same code base we used with Prey 1. So, but when we started designing the game, we knew we wanted an open world game. We wanted it to be a lot more, a lot longer sight lines. So it isn't just a corridor shooter. So one of the first things we did is we changed the occlusion system uh, and changed the way that the, we pretty much just gutted the entire renderer for the occlusion system to be able to have much larger areas. But another, well, two other key things that we added were the lighting system is all new. Uh, it's physical-based lighting, so the lighting properly reflects around, it properly picks up colors from, from the environment, reflects that around, so that's how we get the real awesome, realistic look that we have. And then the other thing is we added our own uh, texture system, so we have kind of our own version of Mega Texture as well. Okay, and obviously now we have more and more powerful graphics cards coming in the PC, you're starting to get like really uh, the PC as a platform. You're starting to stretch its legs. Um, there's obviously rumors of, of new hardware elsewhere as well. Um, what would you say has been the, the kind of the biggest creative freedom that's offered you over the past few years? Well, I would say, interestingly enough, though, I mean, we found really cool ways to wring a lot of power out of some existing hardware as well. Yeah. I mean, one of the things we added recently is we added uh, reflections throughout the entire world. We got this really wet, kind of rainy world, and everything reflects. So the ground reflects properly, the walls reflect, it looks awesome. It looks really, really good, and it runs really fast, and it just it just works on a wide variety of cards. So, I mean, it even works on the Xbox as well. It looks great. So obviously it's a very, it's a very scalable game, so in that yeah. case, no matter what you've got at home, you're going to get a great experience, is that right? Absolutely, yeah. And we've, we've got some ideas, and I can't go in too much into detail about some ideas about kind of future cards and things that, that PC uh, players may be able to get. But we've got some plans for, for something along those lines. Okay, and have you set a date, or when can you expect people to finally get their hands on, on Prey 2? All I can say right now is uh, next year, in 2012, but it'll be for the Xbox 360, PC, and PlayStation 3. Fantastic. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a good rest of the show. Thank you, you too. Thank you, and don't forget to check back on UKGForce.com for more interviews and news from Eurogamer Expo 2011. And it's raining ice picks on your steel shore. Call me Rocky Tomato. I'm gonna break. I'm gonna break my I'm gonna break my rustic cage. Target identified. <laughs> Thank you.